So, folks, the fighting continues, and it was so bad. No one's talking about this. It was so bad that in the middle of proceedings, sitting down in the courtroom, Trump's team, his attorneys, ditched him, ran away, stood up, leaving Trump sitting there as they exited, as the fighting really intensifies between Trump and and his attorneys, between the attorneys themselves, including fights between current Trump dum dumb lawyers and the people who, in some cases, aren't necessarily brilliant, but are smart enough to get away from Trump and, in some cases, have redeemed themselves like Michael Cohen. Because what I have for you is a supercut of all the mistakes Trump has made, but in particular, Two of his top lawyers going out in the middle of this case while Trump is sitting there trashing Trump and his existing team for all of the errors they made. Because the reason Trump is in so much trouble, not the reason he's in trouble, the reason he's in trouble mainly is because he broke all of these civil and criminal laws. But the reason he's in so much trouble is because of his own stupidity and the stupidity of his team. Hit the like and subscribe button. And as I've been saying, guys, the secret to all of this, to ensuring the MAGA goons know the truth that we do, is watching all of this all the way through, hitting the like and subscribe button, leaving a comment, because they'll see this. YouTube will show MAGA thugs the truth they're hiding from. Who's been in plenty of closing arguments before. What did you make of, uh, of how that went? Well, it's so hard to sit there in the courtroom and see somebody just have so much disrespect for a judge, for the court of law, for how these proceedings are supposed to work. And, you know, the attacks on personal attacks on the judge, this is a judge who had a bomb threat this morning. That's why the, the amount of security that was in the courthouse was unlike anything I had seen. Um, and I had been More to other days. I had been other days when uh, various Trump family members had testified and this was heightened. They were, they were clearly very concerned about threats. So for him to make this kind of a personal attack, and then when the judge tells his lawyer to control your client, I'm waiting for the moment where the judge will control him and say, you're, you're done. And if you continue, you'll be held in contempt because that's what would happen to me or any other lawyer that was acting this way in courts, just not done. And David K. Johnston, I mean, looking at this, obviously it's very clear that the, the campaign is bleeding into to Trump's legal troubles. But him being there today, you know, it's not just about the I mean, when you think about it, Chris Keis. The he, attorney. He, he, the attorney. He's not a trial attorney. He's an appellate attorney. And so one of the reasons why he's there is probably just to prep this case for an appeal. Well, talk to me about, I mean, we, the counsel that's there. Who is, do you think, you've been his attorney before, who's controlling this? I mean, is the dog wagging the tail or the tail wagging the dog? You know, when it comes to this case, I think that um, in large respect, it's been kind of um, unled uh, for a while. I mean, I know earlier on uh, when Ronald Fischetti was on it, he was handling it uh, appropriately. Of course, he unfortunately passed away. Uh, but, you know, with Alina Haba handling discovery, yeah, that's that's not you know something where I think anybody was really at the wheel, uh, and so now you get into this trial where it does see, does seem to me to be kind of a combination of building a record for the appeal and putting out things into the media that are helpful to the campaign. The court of public opinion versus right. the appellate court it doesn't seem like a lot of focus on the actual trial judge. There's, but that's exactly. Maybe the there's, there's nothing that I've seen that indicates that they are trying to convince this trial judge to rule in their favor. If anything, it seems like they're trying to convince this trial judge to get so mad that he makes bigger mistakes for the wow. appeal. Despite, of course, the judge saying he needed to stick to only the facts, then the judge ultimately telling Trump's attorney to control his client. I mean, talk about the drama. What did you <laughs> think in those moments? Look, I have never seen Donald look so preoccupied. I mean, he has the face of a defeated man on the verge of a nervous breakdown. I mean, it's why he blames everyone but himself for destroying his father's business. And no matter how many times Alina Haba or Chris Kais or any of these others regurgitate his talking points or their denigration of me, the one thing that Donald knows is that the bill is coming and that he can't afford to pay it. 
Well, they certainly mentioned you. I mean, Trump's lawyers calling yeah. you, I think the phrase was a serial liar in court. They attacked your credibility. One would say, what else is new when it comes to this sort of thing? But what is your response to being so integral to this entire thing? Well, I... I, I don't really have a comment for it. Uh, I certainly didn't ask for it. I testified before the House Oversight Committee truthfully. The only thing that they can do, again, is to continue to denigrate me and try to impugn my credibility. So far, everything that I have said has turned out to be accurate. This, very much like the Manhattan District Attorney case, is predicated on documentary evidence as well as corroborating testimony, which they have. It's why I say that the bill is coming and he can't afford it. What's going to happen in the criminal trial? Well, again, we have the same sort of documentary evidence and the corroborating testimony of others. And like this one, I believe that Donald Trump is going to find himself on the wrong side of the um, decision. I mean, there is obviously the different standards. There's the beyond a reasonable doubt, of course, the criminal context, a different standard here in the civil case. But you have a bench trial. It's not a jury. It's a bench trial. The judge, we already know, has been antagonized. He has tried to tell them to control this person. He's already found fraud. You know Trump's business dealings like really no one else. So what has been your response to the argument from Trump's lawyers that, look, I mean, come on, no one was actually harmed here. There's no victims here in this alleged fraud. What do you say to that? Well, think of it no different than somebody goes in to rob a bank, right? Then they get spooked and they run. They still are going to get charged with robbing uh, or you know, attempted robbery of a bank. Uh, what their argument, it's, uh, it's childish, to be honest with you, and it's not predicated on law. Uh, it's basically an excuse, which is exactly what Donald is good for. He's all about the excuse make up whatever excuses that he can in order, you know, to try to convince who his, you know, his supporters that he's right. He's the victim. Uh, nobody else has been hurt. Uh, the law is the law. He broke the law. And now he's going to be held accountable. You have to wonder if that sort of deflection and trying to tell you to take this shiny, bright object over here and focus on that instead of what's in front of me. It all goes down to, though, I think so many people will think about Donald Trump. They'll think about very wealthy people, think about Washington, D.C. or New York or any of the major area, and they'll think, this must be how the rich operate. This kind of thing must be being done all the time. That is certainly what he has been articulating and that what he has been doing was not in any way wrong. You've seen behind the scenes the actions that were taken, the way in which he moves um, professionally. Is, is this in line with what he's always done in front of you? Well, again, we're in a totally different scenario now. When I was um, at the Trump Corporation, remember, and I was there for over a decade, mm -hmm. Donald Trump wasn't president of the United States. The decisions that he made only affected the Trump uh, corporation and those of us that were employed by it. Now, the things that he's doing affects not just the United States of America and all of its citizens, but it affects the world as well. It is a totally different ball game, And the fact that he is now being held accountable for the issues or the crimes that have been alleged... It's not accurate when he tries to say, well, everybody does it. I mean, again, it's pure deflection from Donald. It's him once again trying to be the victim and to portray himself as the victim of this is the best part. The Biden witch hunt, because now it's now the Biden witch hunt, or it's the weaponization of the Justice Department by the Biden administration. It is pure deflection. It is exactly what Donald Trump did when he uh, was president. It's what he says he's going to do when he, or if God forbid, he becomes president again. He is going to weaponize the Justice Department to go against any critic uh, of him or his political enemies. I have to ask you, Michael, before we go to, you know, he has gotten off the campaign trail to be seen 
at these different court hearings, whether it's the Court of Appeals in Washington, D.C., and you and I know, you mean, you're a lawyer, you know full well that most defendants are not going to go to the actual Court of Appeals argument in instances like this. Trial, very different, but he made a point of being there. He's made a point of showing up in New York for this AG um, civil fraud trial. What do you think is his strategy? Is it all about the, look, I'm here, I will confront this, I'm not afraid, or is it just another campaign stop for him? What do you make of his decision to keep doing it? It's a combination of both, Laura. First of all, it's a projection of strength. That uh, burst into that rant yesterday. What's your reaction, though, as to what role it could play in the outcome? Did he help or hurt himself? Well, Jonathan, in the long run, I do think that he hurt himself. I think that what he was trying to do was force the judge into a position where by denying him an opportunity to speak, he would have created an uh, issue for appeal for himself. And Judge Ingeron basically gave him the rope and he hung himself predictably. And so I think that what he ended up doing was basically creating a space where this is one less thing that becomes an appealable issue in the long run that he might be able to go back and say, look, I was I was treated unfairly and my rights were abridged in some way, shape, form or fashion. So kudos to the judge for the judge. Uh, allowing this to happen in the way that it did. It was, I believe, a calculated risk by the bench. He understood that there was a risk that this could happen, but ultimately it didn't play mm -hmm. a factor in the way that Donald Trump wanted it to. So, Charles, the judge, there's a $370 million penalty. That's what the state attorney general wants to impose. The judge has, and will also prevent Trump from doing business in New York State. The judge has said he hopes to make a decision by January 31st. Talk to us a little bit about the process the judge now has to go through and what you think the outcome might be. Well, Jonathan, it's important to note that in addition to the a finding of liability that we've already seen on summary judgment, there were an additional six counts that were on this case that needed to be decided. So there will be a liability determination on those, which I suspect are going to lean in favor of the state attorney general's office. Uh, it's a question, and Judge Ingeron sort of noted this when he talked about the level of liability that he saw with respect to intention around both Donald Trump Jr. and Eric Trump, which was quite frankly a little bit of a surprise. But after determining the liability on those remaining six counts, the judge will then look at whatever information has been presented by both parties in terms of the actual worth of the Trump organization and the level of intention and then levy a penalty based on that. I suspect it's going to be higher than the $270 million that was originally requested, but lower than what the attorney general's office currently seeks at uh, some $370 million. All right.